Representation matters. But as indigenous Chicano people, we can't just sit back and wait for mainstream media outlets to make it happen for us. And nor should we. We started the Tales from Aztlantis podcast because we believe that it is imperative for Chicanos, Chicanas, and Chicanex people to produce our own media and tell our own stories. And the way we choose to do this is by using Buzzsprout to host the podcast. Buzzsprout is by far the easiest and best way to launch a professional podcast. You'll get a podcast website, audio players that you can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episodes, and much more. To start your own podcast and get a $20 Amazon gift card, follow the link in the show notes. This lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you and helps support the show. Buzzsprout, the easiest way to start a podcast. Now, on with the show. You must excuse me. I've grown quite weary. This hasn't been easy, I know. But you've learned a lesson. A lesson in honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty to others. That lesson will stand you in good stead all your life. I think we've all learned a good lesson. I've always heard that honesty is the best policy. Now I'm catching on to why that's so, to why that's so, to why that's so. Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to yet another episode of Tales from Astlantis. We are your hosts, Curly Tlapoyawa. And Ruben Ariano Tlacatecat. And thank you all for joining us for yet another premium episode. I forgot to say that at the beginning. It's a premium, premium? episode. Yes, it is. Man, you lucky fools getting a premium episode <laughs> for all of our beloved Patreon supporters. So how you been, man? You been good? I've been chilling. I've been busy though. I've been yeah. very busy. Not just with uh school teaching, but just doing I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff locally here with the family and my community. With the house and too, right? The house, yeah. yeah. I've been remodeling the house here and there. So it's been it's been a very uh, busy summer and hot too. God, oh, man, I can't believe we're like going on over a month now of straight triple digits over here Damn. in Dallas. I and remember it's continue. It. It's I remember continue. it. I mean, this was this was going to be a, another one for the book. So the, they've already said it's going to be in the at least minimum the top five, if not even the the top three of the hottest summers on record. Damn. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was living out there working at the newspaper, the uh, air conditioning went down in our offices and man, we were like cooking. Plus the graphic design department, we didn't have like windows or anything. Yeah, we in the basement. Like a, yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, we were just like off in this little box where all the nerds sat and did our- Did you get the memo? Graphic design. <laughs> yeah. So we were just sitting in there cooking and the publisher, uh, what did he do? Oh, he had people show up uh, like paleteros show up and just hand out free paletas to everybody paletas. to Dang, help us cool that down. Was cool. Yeah. You know, I thought that was, that was a nice gesture. It was. It's not like we could have all gone home. The newspaper kudos, still has to kudos, come out. <laughs> kudos to the paleteros out there holding it down, keeping people cool on these hot days. Yeah. For real, shout out to all the paleteros. So today, we are going to be watching a, a segment from Vice News. It's funny because we had uh, we had talked about you know the Aboriginal Moors or the Moorish Aboriginals a few episodes back, and after that episode came out, I'm flipping through. This was maybe a week or two after that episode came out. I'm flipping through TV and I see that Vice had also covered them. They did a little segment on them. So I was like, huh, it's timely. We're, we beat Vice News to the punch, man. We've got our, <laughs> we've got our fingers on the pulse of the zeitgeist. <laughs> got the scoop. We got the scoop. So 
yeah, I wanted to check out this uh, this little segment and see um, how they covered. Of course, it's a short segment, so I'm sure they don't get into all the nitty gritty and explore, you know, like an in depth look. But I thought they did a a decent job. Yeah, of like an an overview of who these people are and what they believe. So here we go. We're gonna check out this video. Um, credit to Vice News. The segment is called Moors Rising. The thing I like about this neighborhood is every single house seems to have its own little bit of charm. Just being a single woman trying to compete with a lot of these couples, I lost out on about 13 houses before I came across this one. When I walked in the door, I was like, this is my house. So whatever I can do to get it, I'm gonna get it. You guys, I'm not even kidding. This is the literal SWAT team that was called. Janetta Little was finalizing construction plans on her first home when a stranger changed the locks and told her that the house she bought was actually his. They call themselves Moors. They basically say that they have ancestral rights due to a lot of treaties and tribunal law, that they have rights to the land here. So you buy this place, you have this amazing vision yeah. for it, and all of a sudden, you get a letter? Yes. I got two letters, actually. The first one I got from Jaleel Hugh L. There were, like, seals and fingerprints and signatures basically saying that <laughs> my home was on someone else's ancestral lands. Well, I ignored it the first time, and they sent me another letter saying, because I didn't respond, now we own this house. The third time was basically <laughs> when I was at the van. So they that saw is the locks, uh, legal put their own locks on. <laughs> right. He's now Analysis occupying the home. How do they get him out of the house? Oh, they busted the door down, and they basically dragged him out. And it was really scary. Like, you know, I applied for a gun license. I got pepper spray, you know, knives. Wow, wow. It was really really traumatizing. Police officers still reeling from a deadly attack. Three officers were shot and killed. The manhunt is on for this man, a career criminal considered very armed and very dangerous. In recent years, isolated and random incidents of violence, fraud, burglary, and squatting committed by Moorish extremists have put Moors on the radar of law enforcement nationwide. A Newark home taken over by an alleged extremist group that not only changed the locks, but actually claimed ownership over the property. The man who occupies Shanetta's home was never charged and still maintains the land belongs to him. We did our best <laughs> Wait, to speak with never him, charged but them? he demanded... Yeah, how the hell is that possible? <laughs> Jeez. So they're showing this I mean, email Isn't from, it considered uh, breaking and entering? Or? Yeah, right? Or... I mean, what? <laughs> so here's this email that the the vice reporter got um, from this guy. And it says, uh, peace and greetings, Elzo. Going forward, please address me as honorable and <laughs> not brother. <laughs> our consuls have been elected as public officials and we do not take our positions lightly. There are a few reasons why we are not brothers. Damn. One of those reasons is that you choose to remain a United States citizen, and we are all Moroccans. Let's not confuse the two. Thank you for ex that's a, a, a tone shift. Thank right. you for expressing your interest in promoting our consulate within your network. We have discussed whether this opportunity would best fit our goals this year. Let us be clear. We are not doing this interview for free. <laughs> oh, wow. We expect some adequate substance in exchange for intellectual property. Substance? Owned. They want some substance? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of substance are we yeah. talking about? Uh, so <laughs> for the intellectual property owned by the consulate. Let's iron the particularities via contract. Jesus. <laughs> Present us your offer, and then in parentheses, contract for review, and we will inform you of our final decision. Peace and bliss. Peace and bliss. <laughs> <laughs> and then he signs it best. Honorable, all caps, Honorable L. Jalil, Consul General, Al Moroccan Empire Consulate. <laughs> 
Dang, I'm a vampire. And that's the thing that's really common with the Moors, right? Is they use the words Bay and L in their names. So whenever you're online and you see somebody with a name ending or beginning with L or Bay. Wait, know, isn't isn't Bay and L essentially the separation of Baal? I don't in the, know. In the ancient, in the ancient um, um, Mesopotamian uh, mythology, and Baal is like the 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 I guess almost like the what we call Satan today, in a sense. I have no idea. I'm sure it comes from something that uh, noble Drew Ali told them to use, and they just do it. You know, I'm yeah. sure there's a reason that they say. But I don't know it. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look into it. ...to be paid. So that interview didn't happen. But we did <laughs> find a video we posted about the incident online. You have been listening to a sample of a premium episode of Tales from Ostlantis. For a mere $3 a month, you will get access to our premium content every two weeks, as well as to the ever-expanding library of premium episodes. So visit talesfromastlantis.com and click Go Premium. Thank you for listening. Timo Itase. Thank you for listening to Tales from Atlantis, a project of the Chimali Institute of Mesoamerican Arts. If you enjoy the show, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You can do this by visiting talesfromastlantis.com and clicking support the podcast. Your continued support will help keep the podcast ad-free and independent. Until next time, Timo Itase.